All right, hey everybody, it's me and my shadow. Um, I thought I'd show you around the house a little bit, show you my little museum. Um, nothing all that spectacular, uh, most of the stuff I've got, but um, I've got different kinds of displays, all kinds of different little knickknacks, metal detecting stuff, bottle digging stuff, arrowhead hunting stuff, some of these arrowhead displays you've seen a little bit of maybe. Um, I thought you guys would find some of this interesting. I guess some of this is kind of filler. I didn't get to go out on a hunt this past weekend because I was out of town. So I thought maybe some of you would find this cool. I'll show you around a little bit. We might pull some of this stuff out and get a closer look at it. This is just a bunch of metal detecting knickknacks, really. I'm kind of corny. I like old stuff, antiques, and just old knickknacks. Most of this stuff is just basically junk, but it's all stuff I've dug up, metal detecting, bottle dump digging. Some old pocket watch stuff there. Tax tokens, mostly Oklahoma tax tokens. Uh, three Merry Widows tin, which if there's any kids watching, I, I want to explain what that is right now. You can look that up for yourself. That's actually a pretty common metal detecting find. Um, actually, there's another piece of one right there. Yeah, just kind of cool stuff here. There's some rings, makeup compacts. Pocket watch stuff, rivets, pocket knives, mouthpiece like a tuba or something. Open up this one as well. More pocket knife stuff, some harmonica reeds and other types of reeds. Some of this stuff I don't even know what it is. Most of it I know what it is, but some of it's just interesting stuff this was kind of neat this is the piece of a uh, piggy bank that i dug up for silver dollars unfortunately the rest of the piggy bank with the silver dollars was not there but that would have been a killer discovery had it been we got some dog tags down there dog vaccination i think this one's like 1938 Um, random little toys and stuff. Got some Bennington marbles there. Whenever you're out metal detecting, not uncommon to find a lot of these. At least the areas I search, I, I metal detect a lot of uh, bulldozed lots where they've bulldozed an old building and scraped the lot. And after a rain, when you go through to metal detect, you'll, you'll spot marbles on the surface. I'll show you. These are all marbles I've found out metal detecting. Obviously, I, I just eyeballed them. The met, they're glass, so the metal detector doesn't pick them up. And a little cork top bottle. I've, I need to get my cork top bottles. I've got a lot of bottles that I should put on display, uh, but I just, I haven't put them up yet. You know, I might need a, I got this little light. I need to invest in some decent lighting for when I film indoors. various buttons and a few keys and stuff in there too. Pretty much dug or eyeballed all those. I didn't have my phone zoomed in when I was down here. That's really cool right there. That's actually a printing plate um, of a quad cycle. And that would have been used to advertise that quad cycle. And that one, I actually looked it up and it was from like 1910. That's pretty neat. 
That's from San Bernardino, California. Some street fair they had in 1906. That's kind of neat because I found that right after that big uh, mass shooting out there in, I think it was San Bernardino. Just some more display. Again, most of this is just kind of, you know, and most of it's not worth anything. It's just cool old stuff. There's some Chinese coins I've dug up, Xi'an, Bu Xi'ans or something like that. Those are actually very old. Uh, I think those three right there from the 1700s. A lot of those came over when they were building the railroads here. A little bird skull I found. Random tokens and stuff. This is a really neat one. Kind of hard to see it. That's a, that token right there, that's one of my favorite finds. That one right in the middle of your screen. That's Lewis and Clark on the front. Okay, <laughs> let's hold on just a second there. That is definitely not Lewis and Clark on the front of that coin. I don't know why I said that. Maybe because I had St. Louis on the mind. Anyway, that is Napoleon Bonaparte and Thomas Jefferson on the front. And that is from the World's Fair, the 1904 World's Fair, where, where the Louisiana Exposition, Louisiana Purchase Exposition uh, was a big thing at the, that fair. And they gave out thousands and thousands of those tokens. So it's not really worth anything, but historically it's really neat. I think they made a couple out of silver and gold, and those would be worth some, but that one's just uh, brass or copper. That's the radiator badge off of a Jordan motor car, which they were made. I think they stopped making those in about 1927. That's one of my favorite finds. Tobacco tin up there, old motel key, Ford Model T, or just old Ford hubcap cover. Found that dagger a long time ago. That was pretty neat. Some various buckles here. Most of those are going to be, you know, 1900s. Uh, some of them are probably a little bit older. I think that one right there in the middle, that's probably got some age to it. Let's see what else we got. This is kind of cool. That's my first ever silver coin that I ever dug up metal detecting. 1954 Roosevelt dime. Sorry for the glare. Some more stuff. That's uh that's kind of a cool one. That is one of those water whistles. It's a bird up there. You fill this reservoir with water and blow into it and it makes a whistling sound that comes out the bird's beak. Uh, its head's broken off mostly. You know, most of those, like I had one of those when I was a little kid that was made out of plastic, but this one's pop metal or pewter or something like that. But the funny part is the actual mouthpiece right there is, <laughs> is made out of lead. So uh, it's old enough to have a lead mouthpiece on it, which probably ill-advisable and just some other that's a taxi driver's cap badge from 1935 lead toy soldier they're giving the kids a lot of lead back then that was kept them tough i guess and i don't know what's going on with that i guess they're dancing it's just some random keys that i've dug up metal detecting as well uh, this one right here in the middle, that's a Ford Model T key. I've only dug up maybe three or four of those ever, and that, that one's in the best condition. And that little skeleton key, I've only ever dug up one of those, and I'm pretty sure that one's actually a, a toy skeleton key, probably from the 1950s. It's made out of pewter. It's not like a real deal brass skeleton key. It's hard to find... Uh, 
in my area, it's hard to find stuff much older than the late 1800s as, as far as uh, metal relics and stuff like that. There's just some, some wheat pennies. I've dug up hundreds and hundreds of those. Little keepsake box here. Some, these are arrowheads and artifacts that people have given me over the years, mostly family, uncle, grandparents. There's a couple of repops in there too that I got at the probably a museum gift shop or something. Civil War bullets, I didn't find these myself, unfortunately. Somebody gave those to me. Three ringer, that's a federal. That's a uh, three ringer as well. There's a few points in here that I napped or, or tried to nap. Let's go look at some more stuff. This might be kind of hard to film, but these are just little little doodads I've dug up. That's cool right there. That's a, where's my finger at? There's my finger. That's a wheat penny, 1910 wheat penny that I dug up that somebody cut into the shape of a square. Not sure why. Little Avon makeup sampler, little lipstick sampler. Dug up a few of those. Uh, brownies, like Girl Scouts pin. What else? There's something in here. Oh yeah, this is a token I dug up. That they, they definitely customized on that. I don't know what was going on, but somebody was cutting that and pinching it and shaping it for something. I think they probably used this in something mechanical. They had to rig up something. But that looks purposeful to me, but it's made out of a token, which is interesting. I'll be editing this video that you're watching here in just a couple minutes at this computer. Got some uh, more random stuff. And there's Tom Servo. Uh, yep, just more random finds. There's some more points there. I got some marbles and little keepsakes in that box. But yeah, I like to keep a, an Ethernet running through my house just so that I can trip over it 10 or 11 times a day. And eventually, with a bit of luck, it'll pull the whole computer off onto the floor and break it. And then my work will be complete. I'll show you some... I've got so much stuff under this bed. Most of my stuff I've never even put on display. Most of my metal detecting stuff. But there's some fossils and stuff that I've picked up. Sorry, the light's not great in here, so... There we go. We're out in the light here. Makes the footage less grainy. Yep, there's some, some cool stuff. Just some, some of the bison slash cow slash horse teeth that I found out in the river. Antlers and mystery finds, stuff like that. You know what? This is worth showing. That's an interesting little artifact there that I found on a bulldozed lot. There was two of them. My buddy Andy found one. And I found one. I, I've done research on these, and I've these are actually a pretty controversial little find. There's a lot of argument on what they are, if they're an artifact or if they're some kind of tumbling media from the 1800s or early 1900s. But we found two of them, and that bulldoze lot also had an arrowhead on it that my buddy Andy found. Thought it might be cool to show a few of my 
silver finds. This thing, I know it doesn't look silver. It's super tarnished. Uh, I dug up this silver julep cup, mint julep cup, several years ago. Um, it's 90% silver, coin silver. And it was made in Boston in the 1850s, I was able to find out. And I dug that metal detecting and I thought it was a, uh, initially I thought I'd just dug up a Campbell's soup can. because so it kind of came out of the ground like this and I pitched it. But right as I pitched it, I saw those letters on the bottom and I thought, wait a minute, Campbell's soup doesn't have a maker's mark. So I went and picked it back up and then of course I started freaking out. I had my buddies G-Man Tuna Can and Okie Digger there with me and we were all really excited about it. Uh, that's one of my best finds. Totally solid silver cup. I've been pretty fortunate and I've dug several silver half dollars. These are all walking liberties. I'm really proud of these. It's There's almost no feeling in the world like digging up a big silver disc out of the ground like that. It's like finding a smoker arrowhead is actually what the feeling is like. Um, I dug up a silver pocket watch and I've got some good display plans for this. Actually, my grandma got me a cool little display. That I'm gonna put this in, but that's it. I've dug up several pocket watches and pocket watch parts, but this is the only silver one I've ever dug up. And believe me, I looked and looked and looked and looked for the rest of this pocket watch, I never did find it. This was all there was that I could find. But also, this is from England. I was able to tell by the maker's marks that this is from England and I dated it to about the 1850s, almost like that silver julep cup. Uh, that's how you date these marks here, English markings. You can date them based on the marks. This is one of my favorites here. I dug up a solid silver baby fork and it's got alphabet blocks on that isn't that neat sterling silver that was pretty neat this is one of my best coins i ever dug 1911 d mint mark barber diamond it's just i mean it looks like it got dropped the day it got minted got some decent value to it for that date and that mint mark and its condition. Dug up this silver baby rattle. I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's got the kid's name engraved in the back. And this isn't very old. This is probably from the 80s, 1970s or 80s. And apparently these were kind of common. Uh, G-Man Tuna Can found me one at an antique store that he got me after I dug this up. He, uh, he found one <coughs> identical to this actually, that's in perfect condition, that's not smashed, but this would have been like a little bell or a rattle rather, baby rattle. Then I've just got your basic, more silver finds and stuff that I, <clears throat> Sorry, I keep trying to cough. I dusted the house earlier, and I think I stirred up some dust that's making me cough. There's another silver half, but I think that one, because of the year, is only 40% silver. Still pretty neat, though. Oh, there's the only Standing Liberty quarter I've ever dug metal detecting. I don't know why I've only ever dug one, but I have. I'll take it. Harbor quarters. Anyway, yep, yeah, I'm probably boring you guys to death. Uh, I just thought I, I wanted to get out a little video. I've been meaning to show you some of my other little doodads and whatnot, and I thought you guys would find some. I know some of you find the metal detecting stuff interesting. And hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope to get out, and if it's not raining this Saturday, well, actually, if it's not lightning, I'm going to try to get out Saturday no matter what and, and do some arrowhead hunting. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll catch you next time.